Yo, 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 what is going on? It is the crazy rider right here right now, back with chapter 19 of my Invaders in Fan Fiction. I am so excited because this chapter is my personal favorite. If you stick around to the end of this video, I will give you guys a little behind the scenes telling of the writing process because the writing process I went through is a big part of why this is my favorite chapter. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy it all right here, right now. Chapter 19. Silence. See if you can figure out why it's called that. I had to leave again. I couldn't stand to be in civilization for another moment. It was the fourth time I'd ever tried to leave since I was rescued five-ish years ago. Of course, I am always found and always returned to society. Even if I couldn't return to the old pack, I just had to get out of this complicated lifestyle. So one morning, instead of walking to school with the green child like I always do, I got up a few hours early and headed out the door. My fosters were asleep on the couch with the TV on. I slipped out the door while the sun was still below the horizon, and I looked down the street at the little green house. Nothing about it seemed out of the ordinary. Its inhabitants and no other creature knew that I was taking off. Perhaps one day I would return for the owner of that little house, but right now I couldn't bear to stay, not even for him. I turned and trotted until I was in front of the other house that I was so familiar with. If I leave, I couldn't protect the inhabitants of this house, and one of them wouldn't be able to protect the earth. The human boy would have to take care of himself. I was sure he could do it long enough. The human was smart, and he had the resources to protect himself and the earth. I took my sweet time leaving the city and discreetly making my way to the hills and forests to the north. It took me until sunset before I finally sniffed out the marked territory of what was once my pack. By now, none of the wolves in the pack would have been old enough to truly remember me when I was one of them. I knew that that, and the fact that my aroma has changed so much, would make it difficult for the pack to re-welcome my presence. Using both my nose and my ears, I tracked the pack's exact location. At last, I saw them in the distance. I remained un upwind so that my human-like odor wouldn't spook them. I recognized the Alpha as one of the pups from the litter that was born only a week before my departure. I could see and smell a few others from that particular litter, but didn't recognize anybody else. I knew this would be the situation I'd find myself in if I tried to return. I had to let them know of my location, but also that I was one of them and meant no harm. I craned my neck and started howling the location howl I remember from the pack. This howl would identify my location and that I was part of the pack instead of an outsider. The wolves stopped playing about and all looked in my direction. The Alpha slowly approached me with some betas following. I crouched so that I was lower and in a more submissive position to the leader. The Alpha finally stopped a couple of paws away from me. I looked up at him, and he lowered his head and began sniffing my hair and neck. I remained perfectly still as the black leathery nose tickled my shoulders and arms. It almost seemed he was ready to accept the scent of me when it all went wrong. The nose trailed down until it found itself hovering over the communication device that was given to me by another species. The Alpha froze. His eyes were wide as they stared at me. He took another long, strong whiff of the device and jerked away from me. I bent my legs even closer to the ground as the superior wolf backed away in fear. 
I've never known an alpha to show fear like this, not in the presence of a bear or a moose or even a human with a gun. The alpha made a few whimpering noises towards the betas behind him and then turned away from me, running as fast as he could. The betas ran as well, and soon the whole pack was trying to get away from me. The wolves were gone, and I was left alone beneath this evergreen tree. If this was how the wolves reacted to this device, how would they react to the actual thing, the one that gave it to me? I closed my eyes and lowered my head until my breaths bounced back at me from the ground. The wolves would never accept us as their leaders. There's no way that the green men and the wolves would ever be able to come together. How could I think it was possible for even me to be both? As long as I had connections to one, I couldn't belong to the other. I wrapped my teeth around the device on my wrist and held my grip for a moment. Choosing this would mean I've abandoned him for good, that I've chosen to be a wolf, and only a wolf. With my teeth holding on tight, I ripped the device from my arm. I turned and started digging the dirt away from beneath the tree. Once I had a deep enough hole, I dropped the little device in the hole and stared down at it. It was my gift from him, even if he didn't intend it to be a gift. With a single paw, I shoved the dirt back on top of the device until it was out of sight. I placed my paw on the spot and mentally tried to break my connection to the other end of this object. It felt difficult, almost impossible. It was like trying to cut barbed wire with your tongue. It was painful, and it broke my heart. However, I eventually had to turn away from the tree and the object buried under it. The next sunrise, I had found the pack again. This time I came bearing a gift, a rabbit I had taken all night to catch. While low to the ground, I crawled slowly towards the other wolves. They all soon noticed my presence and lowered their ears and tails. Some of them started to back away slowly, but I started to whimper and whine through the rabbit in my mouth, signaling that I was peaceful. The others whimpered back showing that they didn't want to exchange conflict. I'd seen wolves never back down from a fight. They fight to the death to protect their territory and their pack. Why were they so afraid of the green people? Did they know something that I didn't? Something that even that one human didn't know? I went to the halfway point between me and the wolves and dropped the rabbit on the ground. I then backed away and waited for them to accept my offering. A scout trotted forward and started sniffing the carcass. She found nothing off about it and barked this information back to the Alpha. The Alpha came forward and sniffed the rabbit for himself while eyeing me. Finally, he grabbed the rabbit in his teeth while still watching me carefully. He loud a, let out a couple of low growls to warn me that I wasn't accepted yet. I had access to the territory and the food within, but I wasn't allowed a ranking or a place in the pack. For the next couple of suns or days, I was able to tail the back of the pack, only allowed the last scraps during feeding and never allowed to sleep close to the others. This made sleeping long and cold. I had ditched my human clothes when I first reached the territory. It was to eliminate the smell of human from my body and to give myself more flexibility. This was better than not being accepted at all, and I was grateful to be near my own kind once again. However, I often began to wonder about my companions I had in civilization. Had they even noticed I was gone? Did they wonder where I went? What were they doing at the moment? No doubt one was playing her video games. Another was probably eating a waffle or a taco while watching an angry monkey. The other two were probably fighting as usual. It didn't matter. That wasn't my life anymore. I was a wolf, and I was always meant to be a wolf. Just because I have skin like a human doesn't make me so. It was late in the night. 
and most of the wolves were asleep. I was only able to sleep several trees away from the others, and had to be downwind of them at all times so they could keep a nose and ear on me. I shut my eyes and returned my mind to how it worked just five years ago, back when there was nothing but feelings, nothing but the senses and my reactions to them. There were no words, no labels for anything. I thought about my wolf mother, the way she protected me and the way she taught me to be like her. She was patient with me. Her sun-colored eyes held all the love I ever needed. I thought of her silver fur that would keep me warm during these cold nights. I would never see her again. I could never see her again. I remember the last time I saw her, the fear in her eyes as she tried to protect me. I didn't notice the hot, salty water spilling from my eyes and soaking into the ground beneath my face. It had been reoccurring dreams of her that convinced me to come back. I knew, of course, that she wouldn't be here to greet me, but I just had to come home to where she once was. I fell into a peaceful sleep that only lasted a short while. A bright light suddenly shined down directly on me. I shot my head up to look at the source but couldn't see beyond the blinding light. The wolves around me were barking and howling at whatever was hovering over me. I placed my paw in front of my face to shield my eyes from the light. I looked past the light to see a familiar spacecraft. I heard three familiar voices all shouting down at me, but couldn't truly understand them. My mind was still in a state that couldn't process that kind of language. The bright light was replaced with a tractor beam that pulled me towards the craft. I was brought inside the cruiser, and was sat down by two of the creatures inside. One of the creatures was the driver of the cruiser, and he was looking at me with large magenta eyes. His antennas were perked up in curiosity and worry, just as a wolf's ears might have been. Another creature removed his black trench coat and wrapped it around my shaking, naked body. The third creature was hugging me with his small robotic arms and crying tears of joy. They had worked together to find me. They never worked together. Not so voluntarily like this. Did they really care that much about me? They were all still shouting things at me, but I was blocking them out. I was just too shocked. I was torn between being enraged with them and being relieved to see them again. How can I be both? No, how can I be all three? Not a wolf, not a human, not a green person. I just had connections to each. Human blood flows through my veins while wolf instinct flows through my mind and muscles, and a green person has flown into my heart and refuses to escape. That night, they took me to the greenhouse, where all three stayed and kept an eye on me while I warmed up on the couch. The human seemed so concerned with getting me clothes. He went back to the foster house and got a new set of warm clothes for me. He also made the green one and even the robot turn away as I dressed in silence. The robot seemed so concerned with trying to feed me. He kept shoving pizza and bacon in my face. The green one just kept watching me as I ate and rested. I still hadn't said a word since they found me. Now he seemed to be stuck in the same silence. Okay, it's time I learned you kids a little bit about what it took for me to write this chapter, because this this is one of the chapters that I never planned to write. You see, what this chapter was supposed to be was the chapter for the future Dib episode. You know, the episode with the robot Dib clone and Dib ends up in the cage with the monkey? Yeah, that's what this chapter was supposed to be for. But when I was writing for that... I didn't like it. I hated it. I don't hate the Future Dib episode. I love that episode. But I hated what I was writing for it. Because, for the first time, I really didn't know what to do with Liz. I tried writing her on Zim's side, and I didn't like it. I tried writing her on Dib's side, and I didn't like it. I tried writing her neutral, and I didn't like it. No matter what I did with her, I didn't like it, 
and it very quickly became my least favorite chapter. But then, in one of my later drafts, before I wrote Silence, I had somehow spit out this beautiful, or what I think is beautiful, paragraph where Liz is bringing her mind back to what it was before she was brought into civilization, and she was thinking about her wolf mother. And that was my diamond in the rough. So I deleted everything but that one paragraph, and I wrote around that paragraph, and this is what came out. So quickly, it went from my least favorite to my favorite chapter. But it doesn't end there, because I didn't just magically have this magical chapter within me. See, when I was writing this story, not this chapter, this story, I spent so much time, days and days and days, researching just to get Liz right. Because as much as I can imagine what it would be like to be feral, to be raised feral, I couldn't. Because I wasn't. I mean, it's still debatable if my family is human, but I definitely grew up in civilization. I wanted to get into Liz's head. Really get into her head. Because I knew if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to write her to the best of my ability. There would always be something amiss. So I researched all the other feral cases I could find, real life feral cases. Every story about some kid being raised by dogs, wolves, monkeys, anything to better understand Liz. But every piece of every story only ever talked about what physically happened to them. You know, I was a kid and I wandered into the dog kennel and the dogs took care of me. Like, yeah, we know that. Anybody can tell us about that. What about your mind? What was your mind doing during that? What were you thinking? How were you thinking? Were you thinking? But none of that was ever talked about. And then I struck gold. I found a comment in a YouTube video about one of those feral kids, and I really wish I could credit the person that made the comment, but I didn't write down the name or anything, so I can really only tell you what she said. She was a deaf woman, and because she never heard people speak, and she didn't learn to read or write until much later in life, she said that for a long time, she didn't have words in her head. And she described what that was like. You know, we all have that voice in our head. And when we're born, we don't have words in our head because we don't know language yet. Then we grow up listening to the people around us talking, and we start learning the language. And then we develop the voice in the head. Because we were babies the last time we didn't have words in our head, we can't remember what that was like. But because she didn't learn any language until much later, she can remember what it's like not to have words in the head. There are no words, no labels for anything. That's somewhat how she described it. It's just you and your senses and the world and how you react to all of it. No words or language to describe any of it. It just is. She also said that after learning to read and write, she would still sometimes return her mind to how it was before she learned language because it was more peaceful or something. Obviously, you can see where all this influenced this chapter. When I first found this comment, I was in tears because it was exactly what I was looking for. 
or the closest I would come to find what I was looking for. And I was like, will I get to use this in the story? I need to use this in the story. How will I use this in the story? And then this chapter happened, just like I said it did. It was like magic. It was like the god of storytelling was working my fingers. And I've made so few changes to this chapter since I first wrote it. All the other chapters have gone through so many changes and edits, but I've hardly had to make any changes in this chapter because it was so perfect from the beginning. That's why this is my favorite chapter, because this was the chapter where I did the impossible. I created a story, a situation, a world, a character that has no words. And I created it using nothing but words. It is my greatest writing achievement. And I wrote it when I was 18. My writing peaked when I was 18. I would never write anything as great as this chapter. Until I do it again three chapters later. Okay, bye-bye. Keep your crazy.